Welcome to Springfield Reads, a virtual story time from Hyde Hall in Cooperstown, New York, and the Springfield Center Library. Today we are reading about Thanksgiving and the time period in which the first pilgrims lived. Our reader today is Gail Buell, who is lo- a local accountant. She will be reading Sarah Morton's Day, A Day in the Life of a Pilgrim Girl by Kate Waters. We hope you enjoy this story. About a little girl who lives a long time ago and what her day would have been like. Yes, Oliver. Can you close the... Sure. This is called Sarah Morton's Day and it's a day in the life of a pilgrim girl. Got it, got it. It's by Kate Waters and the photographs are by Russ Kendall. Yes, Micah? This is my village and it is called Plymouth Plantation. This is Sarah talking. She's telling us a story of her day. At sunup, when the cockerel crows, I must get up and be about my chores. I put on my overgarments. I have a petticoat, stockings, garters, another petticoat, another part of the petticoat, a waistcoat, a coif, which is up in her hair to hold that up, an apron, a pocket to carry things and some shoes. And I roll my bedding into the corner. So this is how she starts her day every day. The fire is mine to tend. I throw brush on the red coals to make them dance. Mother and I make a hasty pudding. I lay the table with clean cloths, bowls and spoons. I serve mother and my new father first. I must stand at my place to eat. Perchance my new father will make a stool for me. With the table scraps I have collected, I go out to feed the chickens. Because I have forgotten to latch the pen, I must run and catch our hens in a game of chase. (laughs) Can you see yourself doing that? Mm -hmm. At milking time, I find my best friend, Elizabeth Warren, at the pen. As we milk, we tell each other secrets. Today, I tell her of a dream about my real father. I so miss him often, but I do not speak of him to anyone save Elizabeth. I do not wish to seem ungrateful to my new father. Elizabeth likes to remember the time before she came here to the new world. She tells me of shops in England, of colored ribbons and affairs with women dancing. After milking, I muck the garden to make it rich for planting next spring. The muck is heavy and I must often stop to rest. Hurry along, Sarah, mother calls out from the door. Oh, Mary, I am caught idle again. I am to pound spices this day. Our house will have a pleasing scent. The thump, thump, thump of mother's churning keeps me company. I wish I could tell mother about my dream, but she is quiet today, and I have often enough gotten the rod for speaking out of turn. Next, mother and I prepare the midday meal. This is a little recipe here that tells you how they make 17th century Indian cornbread. That means that this day in Sarah's life is sometime in the 1600s. That's over 400 years ago. Can you imagine? When my new father comes home for dinner, he seems pleased with the rich pottage and warm Indian cornbread that we have made. After dinner, It's time for my favorite task. I draw vinegar to polish the brass. I am patient and I rub the salt and vinegar slowly. The kettle will truly shine. All of a sudden, I hear a warning shot from the meeting house on the hill. It means that a ship has been sighted. Perchance we will have some visitors on tomorrow's tide. I pray they won't be people who might wish us harm. Mother says I may fetch Elizabeth, so I run to the top of the hill to see the ship, but it is still just a tiny speck at sea. I dare not wait to see more. It is time now 
for my lessons. My new father thinks I show a great talent for learning. I am thankful, for in many families, girls are not spared from their chores for lessons. My fingers seem clumsy around the chalk, but it gets easier as I practice. Someday, I may be able to read mother the letters she gets from her relations in England. Micah, can you come a little closer? Thank you. After the lesson, Elizabeth is waiting for me. I show her my new father's gift. He has made me a knicker box. Elizabeth and I take turns shooting. So we had some kind of game. Today, my marbles go through the arches more slowly. Hers bounce back to her. I am winning, but the sun is beginning to lower and I must get back to my chores at home. I feed the fire to heat the pottage again and milk the goats once more. See the milk going into the pail from the goat's udder? The big brown goat is troublesome. The more I push and milk, the more she kicks. I will have a mark to show from her tomorrow. She's gonna have a bruise, isn't she, from getting kicked, ouch. As I return from milking, my new father is coming home. He has news of the ship. It carries visitors from our village way back at home. There is so much to talk about where to lodge them and how to portion out the stores that we have. After we have eaten, my new father quizzes me on my verses. I have been learning this one by heart since last Sabbath. It has many words to turn my tongue into a knot. It's from Psalm 100 in the Bible. Beautiful Psalm. This evening, father is pleased with my learning. He hugs me with pride. Perchance he does like having a daughter. Mother calls for me. We set off for the spring to fetch water for tomorrow. We look out to sea and see the ship. Perchance mother will have letters and a bolt of new cloth tomorrow from our visitors. Now there is time for quiet conversing. Mother speaks first and she asks how I am liking my new father. I can truthfully say that I am becoming fond of him. It has been many months since I have seen mother seem so glad. It is getting towards sundown. The village quiets as we turn homeward. Father and mother talk in the candlelight and I bid them good night. I get my bedding ready and put my overgarments in the chest. Though I am almost grown, I tell the day's events to my poppet. See her little doll? I tell her about the ship in the harbor, winning knickers from Elizabeth and my dream. And best of all, I tell her of my new father's pride in my learning. It has been a fine day. I say my prayers and thank God for his bounty. Fare thee well. God be with thee. Mm. That's a story of a long time ago. Thank you for listening to our story today. To find out more about Hyde Hall or the Springfield Center Library, please visit us at our websites in the description box below. You can be a part of this project. If you would like to volunteer to read a story, or if your children would like to attend the live filming of the Storytime programs at Hyde Hall or the Springfield Center Library, please email Colin at the email in the description box below. Keep reading, Springfield!